What's up, you two? It's MR2. We'll take a look at uh, Mr. Angus Wangus' discovery here about at least killing his perpetual motion holder. And if you're not familiar with it, go look into uh, Ed Lee Scallon's perpetual motion holder, a guy named Matt Emery. He's one of the first I've seen that, that actually replicated the perpetual motion holder with the battery and the end cap. At any rate, it's the same principle here. We're only when we're passing a magnetic field between the two end pieces of the horseshoe rather than putting a cap on the end of it and using it as a uh, stationary magnet. Now, what, what, first we really need to pay attention to look at is uh, how we've been producing and using electricity for the past 100 years or so. And uh, this is a modern day induction motor, and you can see here they, they have the, the horseshoe iron piece, which is called a stator, with a magnetic wheel. This is actually a motor and, and, a, and one wind and a coil of wire, just one wire wound and round and round and round to you know, both ends. And, and when you induce electricity into the coil, it causes the, the magnetic current to flow through the iron stator, creating magnetism, which is propelling and attracts the magnets on the wheel, causing it to turn. This creates a lot of resistance and uses a lot more energy than you put into it, or that it, you get out of it. Excuse me. And uh, that is what these two, in fact, this is one of those coils right there identical to that and I wound one here just to keep the wheel kind of even and uh, we'll use those and I'll show you the difference uh, uh, between that and, and this and, and what we have to pay attention to the key factor is how much electricity does that go into the machine to begin with you know we have a 12 volt motor here that's just powered by 12 volt battery and, and I got an amp meter hooked to it to tell us the amperage use that it's using when it's in motion. And of course the less amperage that goes to that motor means the less electricity that it's using, which creates less, makes the wheel actually turn faster. So I got a little RPM gauge here, and we'll be able to use it too to, to tell how fast the motor's turning. And uh, you can see here, what I got on the output side is just two little DC motors with some little propellers on there so you can see that they that they run in, in the called a DC uh, or bridge rectifiers. It converts AC to DC, and, and there's one on the breadboard. There's going to be it's, it's four diodes turned in, in uh, proper direction to to uh, convert the AC into DC direct current. All AC generators are AC internally. You, you know, the AC generator has to be converted to DC right off the bat. So. And the, and the reason for that is because, you know, you have a magnet here that has a north side and a south side. And in order to create a pulse of electricity, you have to isolate that. The next time it has to be a south and a north. You have to plop that over. And each time one of those go by that, it creates an opposite field. Now, in, in, in that coil, it creates a, what's known as the lens effect, which the more you apply the, the stronger the resistance is between the iron core in the center and the magnet passing by it which causes the wheel to slow down if you've ever seen a generator run or anything like that you know plug electricity and you can plug in and see that it puts a drag on the engine you know causes it to run harder when you use this type of uh, system it, it does the absolute opposite effect which completely breaks Lin's law altogether and uh, so here we go, we'll try it, show you how it works. I want you to see how sensitive that this wheel is with these two coils. Let me just turn it by hand. You can see just by turning that just a little bit, the motors take off. You hook them to that little coil down there, they won't even move by hand. At any rate, we'll take everything off of it. There won't be anything on it. We'll turn it on. Take a look at uh, the amps and the pulls and the RPM that is paying. We're going to even out here to take a look at the RPM gauge. We'll hold it right close. 435 RPM, 34, somewhere in there. 435, 435. 
over there. Yeah, we're at two. Come over here and look something to it. We'll, we'll go with the conventional back system that we normally use and we'll see what happens. And you can see here this is just the DC motor with the bridge up the back. Put this on here. And of course, we'll put that here and make that motor run. And we'll put one on each coil. Certainly, I'm going to be looking into it a whole lot more. 
certainly got my curiosity here. So having said that, thank you, Mr. Angus Wangus. You're awesome. Awesome, brother. Awesome. Peace and love. Big heads up.